What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in this video I wanted to show you how to create a spiral staircase rail using the extension Flowify. So before I get started, today's video is brought to you by my new channel, The Rendering Essentials. So The Rendering Essentials is a channel where I focus more on creating photorealistic renderings with extensions like V-Ray and uh, we're going to be focusing on some uh, Unreal Engine as well as extensions like Inkscape and Lumion. That sort of thing. So if you're interested in photorealistic rendering tutorials, make sure you check that out at youtube.com slash the rendering essentials. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I had made a video a few weeks ago about different ways to create spiral stairs in SketchUp. And so one thing I didn't really focus on in that video is the way to create rails for your spiral stairs. And I will start by saying there's a bunch of different ways that you can do this. In this video, I wanted to focus specifically on using the extension Flowify to create a rail around your staircase. So to start off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw just a simple staircase. And I'm gonna use one of the methods from that video. In this case, I'm gonna use an extension called Memory Code copy in order to create the steps for my staircase. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to draw a circle and it's going to be a four foot circle. And then I'm going to draw another circle with a width of eight feet. And so what that's done is I'm assuming this isn't going to be a spiral stair that goes around just a central point. It's going to have a little bit more space on it. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to draw out the spiral stair. So I'm just going to draw a line here and I'm basically using the natural segmentation of these circles in order to get kind of guidelines in here. And I will note that you can add more stairs or less stairs by adjusting the number of segments in your circle. But in this case, we're just going to kind of leave it as is. And then I'm going to double click in this circle and I'm going to select the option for find center. And so when I select the option for find center, you can see what this does is this creates a guide point in the center of my circle. Now I know where the center of these two circles were and I can delete out all of this stuff. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to push pull it up. And I'm probably going to push pull it up about six inches for right now. And I'm just going to select this step. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click make component. And so remember when I make a component, that means that basically any copy I make of this object, um, any changes that I make are going to be made to every single copy. And that's going to get really important. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to use the rotate tool in copy mode. So we're going to select this object. You're going to tap the Q key to activate the rotate tool. You're going to click on this center point to set your base point or to set your center point. And then you're going to click on this edge right here to set your base point for your rotation. And you can see when you do this, what this is doing is this is rotating this object. Well, we want to tap the control key to put this into copy mode. And so basically what that allows us to do is that allows us to rotate this point right here and make a copy right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this object and I'm just going to move it up. And so you can see how this creates kind of a natural stair stepping shape and we're going to use that to create the rest of our spiral stair. And so the first thing I'm going to do is, or the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure you have an extension called memory copy installed and I will link to more information about memory copy um, down below and you should also see something up in the right hand corner of the screen about now with a link to that as well. But basically what this allows us to do is when you make a copy of a component, it basically al allows you to uh, recreate or redo that movement. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our original, we're gonna right click, and this extension adds an option called play it again. And so when you get this option for play it again, what you can do is you can click on it, and then you wanna click on the other instance of your object. So in this case, you can see how when I mouse over this, it kinda of highlights it. Well, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on this, and we're just gonna keep clicking. And when we keep clicking, what this does is this just keeps repeating that movement over and over again. And I'm gonna click a few times. This is probably gonna give me a few, Actually, we're just about perfect because I wanted this to make about one revolution. So now we're kind of done with that. We've got our spiral staircase kind of roughed out, kind of where the shape is. And so the next thing we're going to do, because we're going to use the extension Flowify in order to bend an object or bend a rail around this curved shape. And so the first thing we need to do in order to do that is we need to have a path. And so in this case, what that means is we're going to go inside these components. And if you remember, Every time you make a change to one of these, it's gonna make a change to all of them. So if I draw a line from this point to this point, 
you can see how I'm going to get a path all the way along here. But before we even do that, what we want to do is we want to go inside our component. We want to triple click to select this whole thing. We want to right click and we want to make that a group. So we want each component to have a group inside of it containing your stair. And then we also want to draw a line from your bottom point here to the bottom point of the next stair down. So now every one of these components, like if I was to move this out, for example, you'd be able to see that every one of these components now has a step and it has a line. And so what that means is now, and you need to make sure that you made all the changes that you want to make, first of all. So like, for example, if you wanted there to be a gap in here between these, you need to go ahead and make that change before you do this next step. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it as is. But if you want to do anything else that requires changing all of these, do that before this next step. But now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, we're going to select all of these, and we're going to explode them. And the reason we're going to explode them is because we need each one of these line segments um, to be in here as an actual segment, not as a part as a, of a separate component. So, and there be a, may be another way to kind of work around that if you wanted to. You could probably use memory copy or something like that in order to kind of draw that line and then copy it around so you don't have to explode these. Um, for me, it's just going to be quicker for me to just explode everything in here. So you can see how now what we have is we have all of our step groups. And you'll notice that they're now groups, they're not components anymore. And then we've also got our line right here. And so with our line, what we can do is we can triple click on that line in order to select the whole thing. And now we're going to use a tool that's contained in the extension JHS Power Bar. And I will link to JHS Power Bar in the notes down below as well. But we're going to use the, the option for extrude lines. So it's this option kind of in the middle here. You're just going to click on that. Make sure you have your line selected, and we're just going to click once to set a base point. We're going to move our mouse up, and in this case, I'm actually going to type in a height. We'll go ahead and call it four feet and hit the enter key. What that's going to do is that's going to extrude a face up from this base line. And so now what we can do is we can come in here and we can use the soften edges function in order to soften all of these lines in here. So in this case, what I did is I just checked the box for soften coplanar, and then I used the slider to make sure that all of these lines got turned into soften lines. And so now what you have along the outside is you actually have this, um, you have this kind of curving, spiraling face. And one other note is you could also do this on the inside. I probably should have done that before I exploded everything. Um, you could also, just come in here with memory copy and just draw a couple of these in here manually. And what you'll have to do is you'll have to right click on them and you'll have to make them a component. But you can go ahead and create that. You can use the rotate tool in copy mode to copy it around. And then you can move it up and you can just do the same thing where you right click on it, you do play it again, and you just click on this and you can do the same thing in order to copy this up. And so I'll erase out the extra that I created. And then, uh, and then in this case, what I could do is I could come into the outliner and select all the instances of that component and just explode them. So now those are in here as the same thing. They're just in here as a line, basically. So you could do the same thing where you use the extrude lines to extrude this up. And we'll just type in four feet again. And we'll just smooth that out. And so what we're going to do is we're going to double click in each one of these and we're going to right click and we're going to make them groups. And I'm actually going to hide my interior one for right now. But now what we're going to do is we've created kind of a face with corners, which is what Flowify needs in order to bend objects along faces. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a target face. And for anyone that's watched any of my Flowify tutorials, you know that basically what you need in order for Flowify to work is you need a base face, you need a target face and you need target lines. So the lines are going to show you what to bend things, or they're going to show Flowify what to bend things along. 
and they all need to be grouped properly. And I'm going to link to a video talking a little bit more about Flowify as well. And so the other thing I want to do is I want to double click in here and I want to click on this top line and I may have to come in here and do that manually. One thing you could do is you could weld this using an extension called weld into an individual line so this gets a little bit easier. But basically what I want is I want to figure out the length of this path. And I'm gonna go ahead and weld this into an individual line using the extension weld, just so if I need to, I can come back in here and select this individually without having to do all of that again. But basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out the actual length of this curve. So in this case, this curve is 51 feet, six and seven sixteenths inches. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a face over here that's 51 feet, six and seven sixteenths inches. So I'm just gonna draw a line that's that length. I'm just gonna come back in here and double check that. 51 foot, six and seven sixteenths inches. And now I'm just gonna use the rectangle tool in order to make this a rectangle. I'm also gonna come in here and I'm gonna reverse all these faces. And then I'm gonna double click on this and I'm gonna make it a group. And if you remember from Flowify, and I get so many questions about this, so pay attention. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put all three of these groups in a group. So I have a group here, a group here, and a group here. And you can see inside your outliner that you have a group containing just your two target lines, you have a group containing your base face, and you have a group containing your target face. And this grouping is extremely important. If you don't group things the right way, this extension will not work. Um, so now what I have is I have this all set up so that I can create my uh, rail. And so what I'm gonna do in this case to test this is I have the extension Flowify installed. So I'm just gonna go up to extensions, Flowify, and I'm gonna click impose grid. And if you get a series of lines in here, this is basically the extension showing you what it's gonna bend or how it's gonna break up whatever you draw on this face. If you don't get lines in here when you click impose grid, you don't have it set up right and it's not gonna work. So I'm just gonna click undo to remove my target grid. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw basically the profile of my spiral staircase along this face. So, or my spiral sta staircase rail. So, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw out my spiral staircase rail along this face. And so in this case, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make this fairly simple. We're just gonna say that this has some kind of a circular top rail. Maybe I'll use the scale tool to kind of flatten it down a little bit. And in this case, you need to figure out where you want this to be on your target face. Like if you were to leave it right here, it would center this rail along this line. So if you want this to be inside or outside, you can adjust the way that's gonna work by moving this in or out. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and extrude this rail along the top of this face. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a group and we can ungroup it later. I'm just putting it in a group so that um, basically the geometry won't merge with whatever other geometry I draw in here. So if you think about this rail, the first thing that's gonna have to happen is you're gonna have to have a piece that covers the bottom of this. So in this case, I'm gonna measure this up and I'm gonna start with a 12 inch piece that's gonna kind of cover the way that my stairs look. And I'm gonna give that a little bit of thickness. In this case, I'll probably give it a thickness of something like, we'll call it a quarter inch. So I may give it a quarter inch one way and a quarter inch the other way as well. It's kind of a preference thing now because you're into your handrail design and I'm gonna go ahead and group that. And then I'll go ahead and draw a couple vertical pieces. And I realize the constructability on this isn't exactly perfect. That's okay um, for the sake of what we're doing right here. Probably what you could do is you could go ahead and push pull this up into this rail just so there's no gaps. And then I'm just going to select this and make it a group. And then I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a few copies of this. So this is very similar to using the uh, 
This is very similar to using the rotate tool in copy mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the uh, far end over here. I'm going to use the move tool in order to move this down to the end. But instead of moving it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap the control key. What the control key does is that puts me in copy mode. In this case, I'm going to move my mouse all the way down to the end and I'm going to make sure I'm inferencing on the green axis. So I'm going to set another rail at this far end. And then before I click anything else, what I'm going to type in is something like divided by seven or divided by 10. What that's going to do is that's going to create 10 equally spaced copies between your base copy and this copy. So now I have that in there. So I have my rails and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide my Flowify group for just a second. I'm just going to draw a circle along this face and we'll call it like a quarter inch thickness. And then I'm just going to push pull this all the way down to the end. And I'm gonna select it. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna make a couple copies of it. So I'm gonna make a copy down to about here. Then I'll type divided by two and hit the enter key. Then I'll go back and I'll unhide that post that I created. So now what I have, if I hide my Flowify group, is I have kind of a um, I have my stair rail drawn out as if it was going to be a flat piece. Well, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to select the whole thing. We're going to put all of it in a group. So we're going to go in, we're going to make it a group. And then the other thing you have to have in Flowify, because right now we have a bunch of groups in here, this all has to be raw geometry in order for this to work. So make sure you've made all the changes that you want to make. And it may even make sense for you to make a copy of this off to the side if you think that you're going to have to change something later. Because once you kind of bend this, it's kind of permanent. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select everything in here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to explode. And so now if I look inside of it, everything in here is raw geometry. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to unhide my Flowify group. And so now what we have is we have our target face, we have our base face, and then we have our group containing the geometry that we want to bend. And before you do this, you want to hit the save button. So you're going to notice what this did is this actually cut off my top group. And the reason it cut off my top group is because this actually extends above the Flowify base face. So you can see how I made this too tall. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo this. We're going to use the scale tool to make this a little bit shorter. So we're going to shorten it so this top piece is below this base face and we're going to run this again. So again, just select your Flowify group, select your rail group. Extensions, Flowify, Flowify. And so now what we get, if we hide our Flowify target group, is we have this rail that just kind of curves around the edge. So we've got our kind of, we've got our face that's kind of shielding our stairs right here. We've got our rail coming around. The last thing I'm gonna show you real quick is you'll notice that whenever this gets bent, this is creating extra geometry in here. Well, what you wanna do in this case is you wanna select this, and then we're just gonna use the soften edges function. And you may need to check the box for soften coplanar, but you can use the slider to adjust what geometry is getting hidden in here so that this is a smoother shape. But once you get the basics of this, you can really use this to kind of bend any kind of design that you want to, though there will probably be some trial and error. And so you would use the same process to bend a rail along the interior of this spiral staircase. So that's where I'm gonna end today's video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you used Flowify for something like this or do you like to use something different? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.